up guys? A lot of you have been asking me about my boards and wanted me to talk more about them. So I brought seven boards out that have a lot of significance to me and I'm going to go through each one and let you know why they're so special. So let's have a board meeting. First board I have here is a 6-2. The model name at the time was a FJB and it was shaped by Britt Merrick. This was one of the first models that we were working on together and we kind of he kind of helped me with creating something that you know was gonna give me more drive and more hold in my turns. So I actually rode this um, my second year on tour and I was riding it at Snapper and uh, Bells, Margaret River. And I actually rode it a lot on the North Shore in the preseason. And I was really liking this board. So I pretty much took it on tour with me the whole year. And that's pretty much where we first started on kind of tailoring the board specific to what I want to do and where I'm going to surf. So this board actually has a really cool story. And I actually haven't rode it since, but this is the board that I rode when I had that heat against John John and we kind of had a good battle. And pretty much from there, it was all history. And this was just a really significant board to me and it was special and it felt like it was a turning point in my career and I felt like from there I was able to get a lot of good boards off of this one board. So one board can hold a lot of significance and a lot of power. And this would eventually turn into the happy model. Next board I have here is the money maker. This thing has saved me from falling off tour a few years in a row. And this is my Sunset Beach board. This is the board I only ride in heat at Sunset, whether it's the HIC Pro or the Vans World Cup. This is the FJB model. So this is before um, we made the Happy model. And this is pretty much where it all came from. I mean, there was just a progression of boards and we kind of shape it based on certain situations and experiences that I have. But for sunset, this is my board right here. If I have to surf a heat or things are coming down to the wire and I need to perform at Sunset Beach, I'm grabbing this thing and I don't free surf on it. I barely even practice the morning before the heat on this board. It's strictly only in the jersey while I ride this board. It has the magic blue flames on it and it's definitely my most prized possession in my boardroom. And I've won Sunset on this board once. I got second last year to Jack Robinson on this board. And yeah, this thing's a lifesaver. This board here, this was actually an FJB Plus. So we added a lot more volume up here and tapered down the rail a little bit and actually pulled in the tail. So it actually was a really good pipe board. I rode in the Pipe Masters last year in 2018 and got some really good waves on it. And for whatever reason, the sport was really fast and just really good in the barrel. I had a lot of forward drive, so this is definitely a board you want to have in the barrel. And I think I got one of my best pipe waves in competition on this board right here in the Pipe Masters last year. So red flames is pipe, blue flames are for sunset. bad boy this board is a 10-2 shaped by Britt Merrick this is the first by mail board he shaped me I did have it for the Eddie ceremony the last time they had it and hopefully we get a big swell this winter and I can take this thing out and test it out but you know being invited to the Eddie is one of my biggest moments and um, I think it's the biggest surfing event in the world and it's the only event I want to be in for big wave surfing so you know, hopefully I can compete in it one day and it runs and the bay calls the day and hopefully I'm riding this board. And one of my other favorite boards is my Eddie Aikau Invitee Trophy. Everyone that gets invited gets a trophy. The first year I've ever got invited to the Eddie, I received one of these and this is one of my most prized possessions. All the legends 
of big wave surfing have one of these in their house and it was my dream to have one of these and put it up on my wall. So I'm really stoked to be able to get one of these and it was the last year they did it. Now they give out a different prize, but you know, to be invited to the Eddie is a big accomplishment, big accomplishment for me. And to have this up in my wall in my house is my biggest prize possession. And this board, this is the first board that I've ever shaped. And it was a really cool experience. My good friend, Gen Asano, um, was able to help me shape it. And yeah, it just taught me a little bit more about what goes into my, my equipment and kind of more about what goes into shaping surfboards. And it definitely is not as easy as it looks or sounds. It's not really symmetrical on each side and the volume's kind of not displaced right on the board, but hey, it was my first time. I'm learning and hopefully I'll get better each time I do it. I was actually able to get a really fun session on, at Alamana Bowls on this board. It was actually some of the best waves I've surfed in town this year. Cue the clips. No, what? Going, no, <laughs> Why didn't you tell me anything? This board, and this is the board that I've been riding lately. This is my everyday board. If the waves are, you know, two to three feet, this is probably the board I'm gonna grab. It's actually a squash tail, which if you notice, all the rest of my boards are round pins. So that's already a little different. It's still a happy model, but we put a little more rocker in the nose and changed up the concave a little bit um, to help it go rail to rail. And the rocker in the nose is to help it fit in the pocket a little more. This is my favorite board right now, and I've been riding it pretty much every day. And if you see me surfing, this is pretty much the board I'm riding. This board right here, is a happy model board that I rode on tour a couple years ago. And this board has my favorite spray job on it. The green flames is something that I was really stoked on with the black rails. And spray jobs to me are huge. It makes me want to ride the board. It makes me excited about the board. And I've always looked at, you know, guys like Andy and Bruce and Sonny Garcia and Mick Fanning, and they always had like cool spray jobs. So I drew inspiration from the fastest surfer in the world, Mick Fanning. He had this color spray job on his board and I just thought it was really cool. So this was actually a board that I had in my quiver going in a Snapper Rocks in Australia, which is Mick's home break. This is also the signature Martin Potter spray job with the flame. So it's his exact spray job that he used to have. And he was one of the most radical, fastest surfers in the world. So that's pretty much all the inspiration that went into this one spray job. What I want to do is let you guys choose. Why don't you guys leave a comment below and give me some ideas of what I should do on my next board. Ideas on spray jobs, colors, the design, anything. I want to know what you guys think and you know, who knows? You might see one of your spray jobs on my board. That is a wrap for the board meeting. 
I give you an inside look on seven of my favorite surfboards. They're all super special and significant to me. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget, leave a comment below and let me know what I should do about my spray job for the winter quiver. And like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next Aloha Friday. Cheers!